FRSX stock. This is Foresight Autonomous. And this is a new, uh, a new player in the coronavirus game. So Foresight's a company that does automotive sensors. Um, they specialize in heat-based sensors and, uh, and AI. And so they have just submitted a patent for a, a coronavirus sensor for people, uh, like a mass sensor that can detect coronavirus symptoms. And yeah, and so that's it. It's just a patent application. They don't have any kind of um, manufacturing or any kind of approval or anything like that yet. Uh, they just have a design and they've submitted a patent. And so you can see here that this company has just been kind of dropping since they started and potentially forming a, a base here. And most of their blasts here, news blasts have resulted in a lower, in a lower level, but uh, this last one, well, slowly trickled back down to the same kind of level. Uh, so yeah, they were trading at 12. They're bottoming around 50 cents. And so uh, this news blast here today uh, has popped it up almost to two dollars. And yeah, so. There's like a little run up here uh, into this news blast. And uh, generally these news blasts will reverse down into an area uh, that's above where it shot off from. But these stocks that have a long term, that have a long term bear trend, uh, don't always don't always settle above after the news blast. And so this is uh, this is a switch. Uh, you know, into a different space here. And so this is a, this is an interesting one to look at maybe over the next year or two. Um, if they start developing, you know, coronavirus based uh, sensors, then, uh, you know, then we could start seeing, we could start seeing sort of higher, higher shelves as news blasts come out. You know, sort of like mRNA or something where they keep getting uh, blasts. And usually, like right when the news blast comes out, it will pop and kind of reverse a little bit. Um, but over time, some of these companies that are that are doing the coronavirus industry stuff um, will start going up. And so this is the first mention from this company that they're sort of entering the the coronavirus, you know, field or whatever. Um, with these heat sensing cameras. And so as far as a lottery ticket goes, this is a this is probably a pretty base price kind of lottery ticket uh, with regards to the coronavirus. And I'll throw this in my coronavirus playlist. I have a whole list of these kind of companies. Um, you can kind of pop in and out of these companies and see how they've been going as new news blasts have come out, if they've been increasing. Like mRNA is one that keeps popping up. And um, and this one may start doing that. It may not. We'll have to see where this one settles out. And it looks like it may have. Well, no, yeah, it's still a lower low. Yeah, this one has just been just been trending down for a long time. So it's not it's not exciting really to me yet until it starts doing higher, you know, higher base moves. And so that is the FRXS, FRSX uh, Foresight Autonomous with their heat sensing cameras. And uh, they're generally in the automotive space. And uh, let's take a look at the market and see what's going on now. I think we're just starting trading. And let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so we popped up out of the uh, out of the channel here. Oh, so that's a really interesting move here. Let's flip through the uh, let's flip through these and see what it looks like. And so we've been getting some bear side or sorry bull side waves here, and so this waving action all up on the top side of the chart is bullish, 
And here's a, another move up, uh, bullish move up. Yeah, so uh, kind of drilling down from a couple weeks to right now. Uh, this is a big move up, obviously, and this uh, tiny, tiny reversal didn't happen here. And so th this will be interesting to watch to see um, if this settles up here on top of this uh, channel. Or, uh, yeah, let's see where this thing goes. So this is potentially a bull side breakout on an already uh, bullish channel here. And so, yeah, so for the bears still uh, trying to break down and get underneath this thing. And there's no bearish move indicator at the moment. This is a, just a bullish move in bullish territory on pretty much all the charts here. And so um, kind of flagging movements or sideways movements here should be should be bullish. And the only thing bearish would be uh, breaking down kind of hard uh, through the channel. And so, yeah, that's pretty wild. Let's check out let's check out financials oh wow the financials popped up pre-market and they're starting to come back down uh, so this so this is one indicator of the whole market that financials are getting stronger and this one's confusing to me because the interest rate information that's coming in is still pointing at lower interest rates which should be very bad for the financials well, and then, I mean, obviously the fundamentals and the prices right now are not making a whole lot of sense. And there's huge debates on where the price action is actually coming from. Um, because the Fed is not actually buying very many bonds. Like they announced they will buy bonds, but they haven't really been doing that much. Um, but they are basically bailing out the entire euro dollar banking system and just kind of uh, flooding money to the international banks that have had the huge uh, liquidity squeeze. And so um, the best kind of theories I've had for where the money is coming from right now, I mean, people are saying like FOMO and that, but um, since the stimulus checks came out and the huge unemployment rates came out, the level of savings of the American people have gone way up. And... So that doesn't seem like a huge source of money into this market to me. This is this is bigger money, and it could have to do with the like Japanese and the Europeans that are seeing their interest rates dropping, like the hedge funds and investors in those areas are trying to rebalance away from you know, away from their own uh, securities that are looking bad right now and into American equities. And yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of wild. I know everyone keeps saying like the Fed is just blowing the market up and stuff, but I mean, just saying the word money printing doesn't really mean anything. Like it has to have an actual way to get into the market and stock buybacks have been going way down and the whole, yeah, the whole, way that the Fed liquidity was getting into the markets was loans to companies doing stock buybacks and that has decreased dramatically. And so I think there's just other stuff going on here that I haven't heard a really great explanation. I've been watching a ton of macro videos and I still just don't see where the money is, is coming from. But I think that is the best guess that I've heard is that it's actually um, it's actually money printed by the Fed or the other banks in other countries um, and coming from hedge funds in those countries uh, because basically the world is in a, a depression right now. The whole world's in a depression uh, and the dollar is is the you know it's like the dollar standard that's backing all of the other currencies. And so everybody owes their huge amount of loans in dollars. And 
they have to they have to sell their currency to get dollars to pay the dollar loan so there's just uh the dollar demand is high right now and the interest rates in other countries are dropping right now faster than the interest rates in the dollar is dropping and so that is makes the dollar and makes the the american equities look better than the equities in the other countries um but if we look at the like at the dxy it has been pushing down so what is the dxy doing now oh uh, the dxy it may have found a little bottom here um, but this is a big push down in the dxy which says um yeah which which would indicate that the that we're getting in more inflation in the uh, U.S. dollar than in mostly the euro because this is versus other currencies. Um, but yeah, as an inflation indicator, that would suggest like the dollar is going to get weaker instead of stronger. Like we're getting a big move down here, and so I want to see if this DXY push here uh, gets reversed really hard like we did here. Like we got a DXY push here, and we got a huge response from the rest of the world. Um, printing their currencies and yeah I mean just from the shape of it it still looks like it's breaking down it hasn't it hasn't made like a bullish kind of move yet um, but this is definitely this is definitely a big one to watch right now is the DXY to see if it if it keeps pushing down and that would be saying that the US dollar is actually actually successfully getting inflation and if it really is then that would be bullish for the stock market and bad for the dollar and uh and yeah but every other time that we've had a a push down dxy we've we got a pretty good reaction so far and so yeah that's that's a big one to track and I don't know what else. I guess silver. Silver is a good one to look at for inflation. And silver has chilled back down. This is just a mess of of indicators that aren't really aren't really lining up. I mean, the fundamentals are obviously terrible and now. A uh, huge unemployment rate. I saw I saw a uh, an estimate of the U.S. GDP to minus fifty three percent which is absolutely insane, like less than half the entire US GDP uh, just this year. And um, I mean, that would throw the jet, the, the US debt to GDP ratio, like crazy, like out of whack. And yeah, I'll go look, um, I think the PMI numbers are in now too. So, so this is, uh, this is just a mix of signals right now that's hard to, figure out really what's going on um, but the stock market is still on this tear to the upside and uh, I'm gonna keep trying to research to figure out basically where the price action is coming from and I'm not buying that this is a couple of people that got a stimulus check just like blowing the market up um, I just just with the savings rate and everything, that doesn't really make sense. And with the buybacks decreasing, none of that really makes sense. Um, but the international markets and the Fed basically bailing out all the international markets makes a little bit more sense to me. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of the news flash today. And uh, this breakout here is is a bullish breakout. Uh, of this long channel here, which is a really interesting one. And so let's see if it sits sits up top of this channel or, uh, you know, whatever gets back in here uh, over the next day. And, and uh, yeah, that's probably good. Let's see if people are shorting now or not. So people started shorting yesterday. Oh, here we are. So yeah, people were shorting yesterday, and today people are super not shorting. Everyone's super long again. So that is uh, an interesting look at this uh, at this breakout.
and uh, yeah, we'll just have to see have to see what the S and P does after this breakout move. Uh, it's a pretty aggressive up move here. And then as far as the as the length the length of time of this uh, kind of reaction to the drawdown is, I mean, not excessively long. Like there's other there's other kind of bubble pops and crashes where, I mean, it's taken months and months, like six months or something, to uh, kind of complete a, a bullish move over here um, before another leg down. But from the Elliott Wave perspective, like we're up here above this here, and so as far as this being like an ABC wave, like that price action is invalidating uh, an ABC wave here, uh, here from the Elliott Wave perspective, and yeah, this thing. As far as a five, like an extended five wave or something, yeah, the Elliott waves are not really, are not really saying too much uh, helpful from this point. Um, but again, this moving average here is sort of what splits a bull market from a bear market, and so on the long term, you know, it's still a long term bear market projection right now. Um, but right now we're in bull territory and we've gone so generally the the long-term moving average will hold the bear market activity down to the downside and if you do break it it usually would get rejected pretty hard back to the downside uh, if you're in a bear market that's what you usually would see um, and then when you're switching over into a bull market you'll see this line kind of pull up and then usually get some action along that line and then stay above it and so that's uh, that's the thing to look at here on this long-term moving average. And you can see it's still trending down. The average itself is still trending down. And so it's not it's not really clear right now uh, until we get more action uh, around this moving average and see it kind of turn one way or the other and kind of get reactions across it, which that could take uh, weeks or months maybe to get the moving average to bend. Or if we break below it to bend uh, one way or the other. And so, yeah, it looks like uh, we're getting some inflation indicators here, um, but not not uh, really clear, not really clear indicators of much of anything. And then obviously the price action has gone dead opposite to uh, the fundamentals in the market. So this is all confusing. And uh, I'm going to keep checking out some macro. Uh, macro people and see if I can get a better explanation of what's going on here. People are saying all kinds of different stuff right now. And uh, and everybody's projecting like off to all time highs like right now or like a crash to the lows right now. No one's projecting that we just kind of go sideways or something like that. Everyone's projecting some super dramatic stuff from here, which I guess kind of makes makes sense because the volatility is still high um but uh but yeah that's kind of the look now uh just tracking to see if this uh breakout holds up here and uh, what what we get relative to the moving averages here and so this is not investment advice and what is this one of the Oh yeah, it was one of the coronavirus uh, videos. So yeah, I have um, I have a playlist with a bunch of different coronavirus companies. If you want to kind of pop in there and see uh, those different companies, and happy trading.